Let's take a look at another question stem here that says, which one of the following is an assumption that would allow the conclusion above to be properly drawn? This is different phrasing from what we've seen before, but properly drawn means the same thing as follows logically. In other words, they're asking us to make the argument valid. Okay, so sufficient assumption. Let's take a look at the argument. A new government policy has been developed to avoid many serious cases of influenza. The goal will be accomplished by the annual vaccination of high-risk individuals. Who are high-risk individuals? These people, right? These people. Everyone 65 and older, as well as anyone with a chronic disease that might cause them to experience complications from the influenza virus. All right, so the goal to avoid many serious, to de decrease the number of serious cases of flu, that goal is going to be accomplished by every single year giving vaccinations to high-risk individuals. Who are high-risk individuals? Well, open the box up. Uh, they're 65 older, plus anyone who has a chronic disease might cause some experience complications. Fine. All right, fine. Each year's vaccination will protect only against the strain of the influenza virus deemed most likely to be prevalent that year. So every year it will be necessary for all high-risk individuals to receive a vaccination for a different strain of the virus. Right here is where you get premise, conclusion, argument. This stuff above is context. The reason is because it's just setting up the situation for us. It's telling us what the government policy is, right? The government policy is, hey, we need to decrease the number of critical cases of the flu. How do we accomplish that goal of decreasing numbers of critical cases of flu? Well, how we're going to accomplish that is by every year vaccinating high-risk individuals. Okay, fine. That's just all the government's, you know, plan, right? The goal and the plan to achieve that plan. <laughs> the plan to achieve that plan. The plan to achieve that goal. Here is the argument. We're told that, look, every year the vaccine protects only against the strain of the flu virus deemed to be the most prevalent that year. The conclusion is that, well, then that means every single year, we have to give all the high-risk individuals a vaccine for a different strain of the virus. Why? Right? Like, there's something missing here, as is always the case. Right? We need to build a bridge from the premise to the conclusion. Okay? Once again, the premise is that each year, the vaccine will only protect right, will only protect against what? The strain of the virus, right, the strain of the virus that's been deemed to be most likely prevalent. Okay, fine. Why does that mean every year the high-risk individuals have to get vaccinated for a different strain of the virus, right? Premise to conclusion, it just doesn't flow. There's something missing. There's a gap. We're standing here on this side of the cliff. We want to bridge over to the other side. Currently, it doesn't flow. What would make this bridge? What would make this flow? In other words, how can we build a bridge? Right, let's think about the premise again. The vaccination protects against whatever strain it is, right? whatever strain of virus that's deemed the most likely to be prevalent. And now they're saying the conclusion, oh, well, therefore, it must be a different strain of the virus every year. Well, then these two things must have a connection. In other words, whatever it is that you're deeming to be the most likely to be prevalent in any given year, then must be different in the next year. That has to be it. I mean, just think about, I don't know how many strains of influenza there are out in the world, but I'm just going to make some numbers up, right? Let's say there's V1, V2, V3, fourth different strain, fifth different strain, sixth, this is probably enough, sixth different strain. So say in year one this year, uh, it's this one that's been deemed to be most likely prevalent. So we're going to vaccinate all the high-risk individuals with uh, the protection against V3. Why must it be that next year we have to vaccinate against V5? See, it must be that whatever we deem most prevalent the year before, we have to have a different designation the next year. That's why. You need to have that. Because if you don't have this, it's then possible that every single year it's V3. This year we deem V3 to be most prevalent. Next year, guess what? It's V3 again. The year after, guess what? It's V3 again. So then this conclusion just doesn't follow from the premises. You don't need a different, you know, right? It's not a different strain every year. It's the same strain year after year. Right? That's why we need this. It's the idea that whatever strain is going to be deemed most likely prevalent, that's going to have to change every single year.
right? V3 this year, next year, well, it can't be V3, just take your pick, V6, great. The year after that, can't be V6, take your pick, V1, right? That's how this has to work. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. And I wanna start with answer choice C, which says no vaccine for the influenza virus protects against more than one strain of the virus. First thing I wanna do is just figure out what C is actually saying, right? What does that mean, no vaccine? protects against more than one strain. So how many strains does it protect against? Exactly one, right? That's what C is saying. The vaccine here protects against exactly one strain. Okay, let's think about how this answer choice relates to the argument. I suppose the first question we wanna ask is if this is the right answer choice. In other words, is it sufficient? If we know that your vaccinations protect against exactly one strain, does our argument flow now? No, it doesn't, right? It doesn't, because the scenario I described earlier still could be the case. Every single vaccine protects exactly against one strain. Fine, let's say it's strain number three, right? And strain number three has deemed to be the most likely to be prevalent this year. So let's give all the high-risk individuals vaccine for, you know, that exactly one strain, strain number three. Everyone's protected next year. Next year, what? Next year, oh, look, it's strain number three again. So you don't need to have a different strain. Do you, do you see what I mean? Even though you protect against exactly one strain of the virus, it's not sufficient. It doesn't allow us to go from this premise to this conclusion because you haven't addressed the critical issue of the fact that whatever gets designated to be most prevalent has to change year on year. Okay, but um, why is C attractive? I concede that Yes, C is quite attractive, even though it's not a sufficient assumption, right? Because I think it kind of helps. I think it helps a little bit, right? Strengthening. You know, if you imagine all the different kinds of uh, strains of influenza, right? Imagine a particular vaccine. Now, this vaccine, we can imagine the strength of it on the spectrum from weak to strong, right? It could be a really weak vaccine in the sense that um, well, along uh, lots of different dimensions, a vaccine can be considered weak or strong, but let me just talk about one dimension specifically, which is how many different strains of the influenza virus does this vaccine protect you against, right? So if it's a weak vaccine, you, you can say that, well, it only protects you against one strain of the virus. Over here, a little bit stronger is like, well, this vaccine actually is a super vaccine. It protects you against 10 different strains of the virus. I think imagine that it just goes out even further where maybe infinity, right? Not only does this vaccine, this super, super strong vaccine, protects you against all known strains of influenza virus, it also protects you against all possible future mutations of uh, influenza. So this is like basically magic, right? That, that's what this is. Okay, but so, so that's how you want to think about this vaccine on this, like, you know, weak to strong. Now, if you think about this argument then, right? Every year, this vaccine is going to protect against the strain of the virus being most likely prevalent. Oh, therefore, they're going to have to get a different uh, vaccine for a different strain of virus every year. I mean, it would hurt the argument if we had a vaccine that was of this type, right? Magic vaccine. Then it seems like, well, maybe you don't need to receive a vaccine for a different strain, right? Because it doesn't really even make sense to say vaccine for a particular strain. We have super vaccine, which is a vaccine for all strains of the virus. So in that sense, right, in the, in the sense that like, if this were true, this possibility could exist, maybe it hurts the argument, then you, you see how C maybe strengthens the argument by a little, a little bit by, by pegging the vaccines that we have, right? every single vaccine that we have by pegging it to exactly this. Like every vaccine we have, you, you, you don't get to be this, you don't get to be this, 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 none of this, you have to protect against exactly one. So, you know, I guess that helps a little bit, right? Not by much, but I think that's the sense in which C may be relevant. Now, you might also wonder if C is necessary, right? Is C necessary? Must it be the case? for this argument to work that vaccines protect against exactly one? Well, the answer is no. What if there were a vaccine out there that could protect against two different strains, right? This vaccine, vaccine number 892, guess what? This vaccine protects against virus uh, strain three and virus strain five, right? So that's in contradiction to answer choice C. If this vaccine existed, it still could be the case that every single year we have to give our high-risk individuals 
a different strain, protection against a different strain. Because maybe year one was one, right? Year two was two, year three was six, year four was, I don't know, five, right? And year five was four. You see, and still it just keeps going. Every single year you still need to get. So no, it's not necessary either, right? So it's not sufficient. It's not necessary. It's like a stretch to say that it strengthens, but maybe just a little bit. But in any case, it's not the right answer. D is the right answer. D says each year the strain of influenza virus deemed most likely to be prevalent will be the one that had not previously been deemed most likely to be prevalent. Right? The one that we're going to deem most prevalent this year will be one that had not been deemed most prevalent last year. Now D is definitely saying this just using different words, but also from a different time perspective. It's like. It's almost like here's what we said. We said this year's will be different from next year's, right? We took a forward-looking perspective, using baseline as this year. Whatever is deemed prevalent this year, next year will be different, right? Forward-looking perspective. D said the same thing with a backwards-looking perspective. D said whatever is deemed prevalent in the present year, that will be something different from what had been deemed prevalent the last year, right? So. This is just to say that there, you know, we can we can try to think up what the answer choice is going to be in a general sense, but the specific wording, we're not going to have much luck figuring that out. The outside writers just simply have way too much time in English; it's way too fluid a language for us to be able to pin that down. Right? There's so many different ways to say the same thing, but the point, of course, is to recognize that he is in fact saying the same thing. A says the number of individuals in the high risk group for influenza will not significantly change from year to year. Meaning, how many people are there in the high risk group? They didn't tell us. They just told us the criteria, like everyone over 65 plus everyone who has a chronic disease. I'm like, so what is that in the millions, right? How many million? I don't know. Five million? Ten? Let's say ten million. A is basically telling you, okay, it's ten million. It's going to be about ten million next year. It's going to be ten million the year after that. Another ten million the year after. Okay, yeah, wow. Somebody didn't get the memo. Right, that is not at all what we're trying to do. B says the likelihood that a serious influenza epidemic will occur varies from year to year. Of course, of course. Right, I mean, think about that. How bizarre would it be if the likelihood of a serious influenza epidemic did not vary from year to year? That would be really bizarre, right? Every single year, you have exactly a 12.8 percent chance of having a serious influenza epidemic. That'd be really, really weird. Right, I I think that'll be good evidence that we're living in a simulation. In the real world, of course, the likelihood that it very it varies. But the point is, like, what? How does that help us achieve our task of taking this premise to this conclusion? Right, like, okay, this year the chance of a serious influenza is two point three percent. Next year is going to be eight point seven percent. The year after that is going to be twenty percent. The year after that it goes back to five point two percent. All right, uh, is it the same strain or is it a different strain that's causing that? I don't know. It could be the same strain. It could be the same, right? Because the chances of influenza epidemic depends on a lot of things. It depends on the virulence of the virus. It depends on, as we all now know, social factors as well, right? How well prepared a society is for a serious epidemic also determines the likelihood of the outbreak, right? So anyway, yeah, B is not. B is kind of like A. It's it's just not. I don't think it understands what what we're trying to accomplish here. And lastly, answer choice E talks about side effects, which Hopefully, you realize we don't care about right in trying to get the job done of、uh, having the conclusion be properly drawn from the premises. Side effects is just not something we need to concern ourselves with.